as a matter of fact, in between, if there's a moment, Okay. My name is Theodore Bolas, and I've been to you. Did you push the clock? Yes. What? Did, did you push the clock in front of you? No. Ah, see, I knew it. Okay, so <laughs> I've always felt that I'm doing game design, and I've always felt that games are very potent kind of alt forms because they change. They change the paradigm of all, which is an artist does, an artist makes an art piece. For example, a photographer takes a picture of a koala, and the viewer has an emotion, like, oh, that's so cute. But nothing <laughs> changes. It, it's only one way of emotion. But in a game, a game can change based on the emotions that you put into it. For example, my game's been playing a, my dad's been playing a game called Just Cause, where oh, it's a giant wall. And you can do whatever you want in it, and it changes based on what you do. For example, when, you, when he's really peaceful, he might play game, the game like this, just looking out into the scenery. When he's annoyed or angry, he might play this. <laughs> so it really changes based on your emotions. But also, like other alt forms, it can change your emotions. Me and my dad were fishing in Big Bear last summer for three days, and we never caught anything. So when we got home, he was a bit annoyed, so I made him a fishing game so he could finally catch a fish. Uh -huh. And when he caught the fish, he went from his bold, formal self to his aesthetic. And it really changed his outlook and emotions. So with that in mind, I've been designing games over the past year with a lot of variety in them. A lot of them have just been test games, just random things I've made for the fun of programming. I made the game called Cubes, which is about moving a cube around other cubes without touching the cubes <laughs> for as long as possible. Uh, this aforementioned fishing game, which is just a lake inside of a valley. This is a game I did for my book report last year, and this game is basically based around running around a maze, collecting items, and then returning home as fast as possible. Um, this game is interesting because I made this for my mom on Mother's Day, and it was when I was working on my physical project, and it took me 45 minutes. And this is only a tiny bit of it. It's a huge open world. It's really beautiful looking. It's got a bed of flowers, a Japanese garden, and it, took, it has 10 lines of code just to teleport one. And this game is my physical <laughs> creation, Cambodia 2, Guardians of the Sacred Scroll. And this game seems pretty simple. It's a hamburger and a few houses, full pesto, cough on the same way. But the world, this one took me 150 hours to make, and over a thousand lines of code. The big difference between this and this is that the gameplay mechanics, this one only has walking around. This game has walking around, walking through doors, talking to people, getting items, giving items to other people, eventually fighting. And so with all those mechanics, it becomes a lot, a lot harder to cope. So I've worked on Cambodia 2 for around six months, around the beginning of eighth grade. And so I got the idea when I was going to a course at UCLA called Digital Media Academy, and I was just doodling random things, and I drew, drew a hamburger by accident. I thought, oh, hey, it's a hamburger. I bet I could make a game about this. So I did. Oh, and I made Cambodia. So Cambodia 2 is an adventure game, which in video game terminology refers to a puzzle game where you can talk to characters and take the items, give the items to other people to solve puzzles. There are six characters in it, which are Onion, your friend who's always crying, Richie McMail Muffin, the extremely crazy rich guy, Pepple, the really cool dude, Siwacha, who is your final enemy, and Ali, yourself, and the security girl. And basically what I mean by adventure game is basically how you do it is you talk to Onion 
and I mean sad because he smells horrible and he's out of acts. So you have to get, you know, you have to refill his acts for him. So you go to, you go to Pebble who wants to pull a prank on Onion by filling his acts up with pebbles. So next time he uses the axe, he'll be pebble spray. Not very nice. So instead, you go to the Witchy McMail Muffin who has a 99% on trying to enter his house. So you need pebble spray to protect himself. So he pays you for that, which you can use to bribe the security guard and get to a fight with Sriracha. Basically, the plot of the game is Sriracha has invaded your house and this spicy smell is giving everyone heartburn. And you have to defeat him to stop his smell. <laughs> Basically, the entire plot of the game. It's amazing. I've had a lot of mistakes making this game because it's really the first big game I've made and I made it virtually by myself. So, one of the big things was is making games requires a huge, huge team. If you're going to make a game that's just a, maybe a picture, you're just going to need an artist. But then you want to say, oh, I want to be able to walk around the picture or maybe shoot it. You're going to need an engineer. Then when you say, oh, I want to be able to heal the bullets, you're going to need a sound engineer. Oh, it's not compelling enough. I need a good score and I need a nice story. You're going to need a wide on the musician for that. If it's about, say, ancient realm and you want to replicate the Colosseum, you're going to need an architect to tell you how to do that. If you're going to sell it, you need someone trained in economics. So you need a very large team just to get a game out there. Also, playtesting is one of the biggest things in the game, because the game is meant for a player. So when I made my, so a game should always be played by the player before it's released. But unfortunately, I did do this till around three weeks before it was due. So all the bugs that popped up, I had very little time to solve. But I did solve them. Also, on February, I had a completely different game than I have now, which was a turn-based battle game. And a turn-based battle game basically means a game that is, you walk around maybe a field and you challenge enemies to fights and you basically just click on moves to launch them at your opponent. There's not much more to it than that. Um, this is some of the random code that powers my game. Um, it's I'm making a game requires each one of these is a separate command to the game, and it, that's why games take so long to make because if you if you think about it, a thousand different commands, and you have to make sure you know what each of them is doing at all times, whilst it's going to there's going to be a mistake. So that takes ages to make. So, I'm just going to show my game real fast, just the beginning to it. No. It's an amazing storyline of my game. Can anyone read that? No. Yeah, I didn't think so. Thank you, Cole. The narration is really helpful. Read it loud. The convents have evolved into four vessels. As you drag on, the war ends. But one convent remains rebel. <laughs> to watch all. That's basically the storyline of my game right now. And then... That's basically the opening. <laughs> and for some reason... What? Yeah, the sweet watcher sauce. Yeah. yeah. And then basically this is just the game. Bill's you can just basically walk through doors. And talk to people. Again, text is text isn't even showing up. So on my screen it's saying, I smell horrible. <laughs> Don't you use axe? <laughs> no, it's empty. Okay, I'm going on adventure to save the world. You want me to get you a refill? That's basically... And then what happens is you get an item. And see here, you have an item. And you can... I'm not going to play through the whole game because it's a bit too long. 
but basically you can be other kill skills. Like this Pepple. He's a random cool dude that made. Because he's so awesome. He wears some glasses. And you can like give him this axe in exchange for this Pepple spike. And that's basically the dynamics of the adventure game. And that's basically my game. some of it from previous. And thank you, Beth, for the amazing alt. <laughs> and all, okay, and just real fast, this, the cube game, the maze game, the Mother's Day game, Hambogia, will all be available at the ACG meeting. Oh, what? <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, that's yeah. so... Oh, yeah. 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 That is <laughs> so <too> cool. <laughs> She drew them, she did them in watercolor, and then we scanned them onto the... And then you downloaded them from, like, a... Yeah. Film. Yeah. Cool. After you have created a game like that, how difficult is it to then have it, say, put it up on, like, a site like the App Store and then get it to download it? The App Store... I do not like the App Store. I spent... I, I, at Digital Media Academy, we spent a day trying to get it on, and... We never got in well. Apple tries as hard as possible to make sure nothing gets on the App Store, is my conclusion. But yeah. the, apparently developing for Droid is pretty easy. But you could put it on the internet pretty um, easily, right? Yes, there's a program to put on the internet. Sasha? Okay, I also have the same question for Grace, which you didn't really answer. What is the random code? Did you just basically just like put your head on the internet? No. <laughs> do? What does that mean? That's the one that it just, no one knows what that does. It's, <laughs> it, they just add it randomly and if you get rid of it, it doesn't change your game. If you keep it, it doesn't change your game. It's with every script. It's weird. Okay. <laughs> well, in the game, <laughs> I mean, I can, this might be actually, I, in the game, I have a Paul, if you try and enter your house, you can, and a uh, little text shows up at the bottom the screen saying, dang, I forgot my keys. <laughs> and so basically it's saying, right here it's saying, if you enter the door, then say, dang, I forgot my keys. That's basically what the code is. I'm really curious about your creative thinking. So a hamburger pops in your brain, and then all this came to fruition from that. Um, How did that all... How does, like, do you sit down and go, I have to think about it now, or does it just come to you? Well, originally, it changed a lot, like I mentioned before. A lot of it came from the Witcher idea of a hamburger walking around trying to defeat ketchup and muscle and stuff. Uh huh. But I figured, 